this memo is really a spin uh, on a, not just a, uh, a set of a particular documents, but uh, broader um, classified information than that. This memo is uh, important to the American people understanding what is going on in the Department of Justice and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I will tell you that it is full of falsehoods, though it is a shoddy and poorly written memo. It's very significant. I don't want to oversell it, but I'm saying this is vital, it's essential for the public to see, and it's certainly important in the body of evidence to be out there. It's going to get a review from all uh, relevant stakeholders. That includes intelligence folks and folks in the law enforcement community. Uh, they'll be advising the president, and he'll make a decision at the appropriate time. Well, we've covered it. We've talked about it. A lot of people have talked about it. We think it's coming out tomorrow morning, actually. A lot of talk today about edits made before the White House saw it and a back and forth on that. The Intelligence uh, com uh, Committee putting out a statement in the majority. It's increasingly strange attempt to thwart publication of the memo. The committee minority is now complaining about minor edits to the memo, including grammatical fixes and two edits requested by the FBI and the minority themselves. The vote to release the memo was absolutely procedurally sound and in accordance with the House and committee rules. To suggest otherwise is a bizarre distraction from the abuses detailed in the memo, which the public will hopefully and soon be able to read for themselves. We think that will happen again tomorrow morning. Let's bring in our panel. Steve Hayes, Editor-in-Chief for the Weekly Standard. Mar Lyason, National Political Correspondent for National Public Radio. And Molly Hemingway, Senior Editor at The Federalist. Okay, Steve, um, wh where are we on this and where it stands? It seems th the story has now, some of it gone to, is the memo going to be all that it's even Republican lawmakers think it's going to be? Well, I'm not sure at this point that it possibly can be because so much has been made of it and the buildup has been so great. Having said that, I think there will be significant new information in the memo. I mean, I think that, that uh, what we learn about the behavior of certain law enforcement, senior federal law enforcement officials will be troubling to people. Is it enough to change the debate in Washington about Trump and Russia and the FBI and all this? I don't think it probably is, but uh, I think we'll learn new information. It will trigger another round of finger pointing back and forth, but it'll be nice at least to understand what the claims and counterclaims are in a way that we haven't been as we've debated this for the last couple of weeks. Here is Speaker Ryan on the whole political distraction argument. I think they would love nothing more than to play politics and change the subject. Uh, Devin Nunes helped Shepard through a reauthorization of 702, which is the foreign terrorist foreign surveillance law. So he's focusing on keeping our country safe, focus on national security. I think what they're trying to do is just sidetrack us with some political game. Mara. Well, that was really interesting today because he went on to say, let me tell you what this memo is and isn't. The memo is Congress doing oversight of the FBI. What it isn't is an attack on our institutions. It's not an attack on the FBI, the Department of Justice. It's not an attack on Robert Mueller or his investigation. The fact that he even had to say that shows you the kind of unprecedented moment that we're at, which is you've got the president at war basically feuding with his hand-picked FBI director, his hand-picked deputy attorney general, who both didn't want this memo to come out. They said it, its omissions led to an inaccurate picture. And that's something we haven't ever seen before. Molly. Yeah, it's not surprising that the FBI would be freaking out about this memo coming out. They have expressed a lot of concern. Nobody likes to have their dirty laundry aired, and this reportedly will air some of that dirty laundry. It's a little bit more disconcerting how many other people have sort of joined with them to keep Americans from learning about these abuses that are at the FBI and just learning more information. Adam Schiff did a last-ditch effort to try and fight this memo from being available to the American people. He, of course, fought the subpoenas that led to the information about this. There is a general obstruction there that we've seen from Democrats on the committee, also from the FBI themselves. They spent the entire last year obstructing requests for information. So I think this is, I think it's wise to temper expectations. It's not going to be a huge deal. At the same time, I think it's the beginning of a long process of figuring out exactly what was going on at this agency and learning more and, and just bringing it to life. So what do you make of Comey's tweet? I just put it up earlier in the show. All should appreciate the FBI speaking up. I wish more of our leaders would, but take heart. American history shows that in the long run, weasels and liars never hold the field so long as good people stand up. Not a lot of schools or streets named for Joe McCarthy. 
And there will also not be a lot of schools or streets named for James Comey in all likelihood. It's very odd that he would make this reference to McCarthy after Comey himself perpetuated this Russia collusion theory, privately admitting to people in the White House that there was no investigation of Donald Trump, but publicly intimating that there was. It's kind of interesting to see former FBI director, former CIA director, Brennan, on Twitter kind of tossing balls in to the public discourse uh, occasionally like this. Yeah, well, look, it's, they're well within their rights to do of that. Of course, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's against the certainly, law. Certainly, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, I think it's, to a certain extent, informative. In many ways, the, the, I think our colleagues in the mainstream media have shown uh, an incapability of imagining that people like James Comey would be political, people like John Brennan would be political. And for those of us who reported on the various episodes over the last eight years, from Benghazi to Guantanamo to the Iran deal, it's pretty clear that they were capable of being political. So I think one of the things that will come out of the release of this memo is that we'll see more politics in all likelihood. Now, does that then uh, invalidate the entire investigation into Trump and Russia? I don't think it does. There are many outstanding questions that we don't have answers to right now. I mean, if, if the FBI played games with FISA applications, does that somehow uh, exculpate Donald Trump Jr. from his meeting at Trump Tower for misleading people about it. I mean, there's still an investigation to be had, even if it's the case that... To that end, uh, Mara, the New York Times has an article uh, saying, among other things, uh, Mr. Carollo, who was a PR person, is planning to tell Mr. Mueller, special counsel, about a previously undisclosed conference call with Mr. Trump and Hope Hicks, the White House communications director. Corallo um, planned to tell investigators that Ms. Hicks said during the call that emails written by Donald Trump Jr. before the Trump Tower meeting in which the younger Mr. Trump said he was eager to receive political dirt about Mrs. Clinton from the Russians, quote, will never get out. That left Mr. Corallo with concerns that Ms. Hicks could be contemplating obstructing justice. Uh, Hope Hicks' attorney has issued a statement. As most reporters know, it's not my practice to comment in response to questions from the media, but this warrants a response. She never said that, and the idea that Hope Hicks ever suggested that emails or other documents would be concealed or destroyed is completely false. Yeah. The zeroing in on the Air Force One right. meeting about the release, uh, the press release that right. came out about the Trump Well, Trump. what's interesting about that is, first of all, those are four words. We don't know what the context was. We don't know if she said them. She denies it. Or what the purpose of that was. The other thing is, this was a statement that was released to the media. This was, wasn't a statement that he was giving to the FBI. Um, but what I think is so interesting about this whole debate is it wasn't that long ago that Democrats were saying the FBI was politically biased against Hillary. They were saying there were some FBI agents who leaked to Rudy Giuliani, put pressure on James Comey to, to, to release the information about the emails found on, on uh, Wiener's laptop. Now we've got Republicans doing this. So maybe there's cabals on the left and the right in the FBI, but they're definitely in, you know, on the hot seat. Right. I mean, I point to the New York Times story. Yeah. The Wall Street Journal story is about um, how McCabe was sitting on Anthony Weiner's, yeah. the email found on Anthony yeah. Weiner's computer for weeks, maybe to get it past the election. Well, I think people should think less about whether this benefits Hillary or benefits Trump so much as we need to have an FBI that can be trusted no matter who is being investigated and they need to follow procedures and not be political. And it can hurt. And they did hurt Hillary Clinton and they did possibly hurt Donald Trump. It's, there's no conflict between yeah, these things. I agree with that.